Bill and Ted Face the Music did not just bring back original stars Keanu Reeves and Alex Winter to their original roles. It brought back writer and creator Ed Solomon, who both co-wrote the earlier movies and who co-created Bill and Ted in the first place, alongside co-creator Chris Matheson. Outside of Bill and Ted, Ed Solomon is a prolific Hollywood writer in his own right. He started out as a staff writer for the sitcom Laverne and Shirley while he was still in college, which made him the youngest member of the Writers Guild at the time. Since then, he has not only written the Bill and Ted movies, but other high-profile films such as Men in Black, Imagine That, and Now You See Me. He has also provided script contributions for Super Mario Bros., the original X-Men, and 2000's Charlie's Angels. In conjunction with the release of Bill and Ted Face the Music, Tom was able to sit down with Ed to talk about his career. In the second of this series of conversations, we talk about the sequel, Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey. Let's get into Bill and Ted. Uh, well, originally it was called Bill and Ted Go to Hell. And the studio was really resistant to that, it sounded like, until the guys got involved with you guys and you all were on the same page and felt like that's what you wanted to go forward with. Um, but before that, uh, it sounded like they wanted to do some other things. And one of them was the boys trying to pass English class by going into classic literature. Um, was there any other ideas that were bounced around before uh, Bogus Journey, which AKA Go to Hell finally got made? The only one I remember was just the going into English. And there are some funny ideas, you know, yeah. like Russ Kalnikoff is going right. to the market and there's Bill and Ted or, you know, <laughs> Bill and Ted are interacting with Huck Finn. That's right. some okay stuff. But at the end of the day, we were like, yeah, it's the same movie, isn't it? You know, yeah. it's different jokes, but the same movie. So if it wasn't for Alex and Keanu getting behind the darker version, we would have been stuck with that one. Yeah. Right. Right. So I'm glad to hear that because uh, I, I, myself and most people I know are really happy that you guys didn't just retread the first film. And that's the great thing about Bill and Ted's bogus journey. And then leading into the new film as well is that it is the next step in the evolution. Um, one of the new characters in uh, Bill and Ted's Bogus Journey was Denomalos. Uh, and uh, as everybody knows, probably, that is your name backwards. Wait, what? <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Go, say that again? Go back and say No, I'm kidding. You didn't know this? Oh, my <laughs> uh, whose idea was that? And are there any other hidden names we may have missed in the film? In the seance, which Chris and I are actually in, if you uh, play whatever we're chanting, I don't, I can't do it backwards. Yes. Yeah. I can't what we're saying is Ed and Chris will rule the world. Um, but speaking of Bogus Journey, the, the end changed quite a bit from page to screen. Um, and some of it's still in the Marvel comic adaptation and trading cards, if uh, you're lucky enough to come across them. Um, why was there this idea to, to reject so much of the grandiose ending and things like Bill and Ted uh, facing their fears and stuff like that? I mean, the ending works as it is, but just I know that's one thing with fans that they'd love to see and has just never been able to been uncovered or found at this point it seems like and w was there a reason that you can remember at the time why they decided to go the other direction or what happened there you know i don't know why i can't remember i gotta talk to alex winter about that because he may remember all i remember is the easter bunny and bill's grandmother were giant villains in the third act as you do in a movie you set something up and you pay it back you, know, you pay it off i remember we had to change it I remember we had to change it quite toward the last minute. I remember we were pissed off about having to change it. I remember we were sitting in my house in uh, Silver Lake, Chris and me, on the floor late at night, angry and punch drunk. And we were not drunk, just punch drunk. And I remember we didn't know what to do. And I remember I had to delete a gigantic section that began with interior police station. And um, I deleted the whole thing, but somehow left dangling the word station. And we were so pissed off and so tired that we just started going station, 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 station. And we said, let's put a Martian in, name station. Let's, let's not even worry about how we justify it. Let's make all he says is station. Fuck them. <laughs> we're just going to do this. And that's how station ended up in the movie. I know that. And then... 
I don't know how we ended up with the third act we ended up with. I know it was kind of rushed. And that's where I feel like we didn't quite get the third act right of that movie. You know, we as screenwriters, we just kind of blew it. And so I, that's why I think the first two thirds of the movie hold up stronger than that. For me, the last third. The final stuff in the movie, the battle of the bands, and then the final end credit stuff. I always get the question, are the end title sequence, is the end, end title sequence to the movie canon? To the, you know, meaning at the end of the movie, um, you know, there's all those end title things showing that they went on and, you know, those, those end credit things, because we didn't write all those. Uh, a lot of them were written by this the title company as jokes, just stuck in, you know, to, to, to get some laughs as the titles rolled. And that put us into a pretty uh, tricky situation for Face the Music in terms of starting the movie, because where do you start a third movie from that? You know, do you start a third movie with now they're famous and they're rich and they've had a falling out and now they come together? That felt cliche and it just didn't feel like Bill and Ted. Bill and Ted would never have a falling out. Never have a falling out. It's like your dog having a falling out with you. Your dog will never have a falling out with you. That's why we love dogs. Um, so we decided to go, well, we have to acknowledge those end credits. And so we tried to our best at the beginning of Face the Music to go, look, we know it says that that happened. They were flat. It, they had a moment. They had a moment where they were the most famous rockers in the world for a month. And they couldn't hold on to that pressure. And it turns out their music wasn't really ready yet. And, it, you know, and it just gradually all started to eat away until within a few years, they were just the two of them again trying desperately to find that song and that's you know and they grew into be middle-aged men and with kids with families with mortgages and this weighing sense of destiny that has been burdening them for 30 years and that's what face the music is about what do you do what do you do if your adolescent fantasy our rock band will save the world turns out to be actually your destiny and what if you're told that when you're a teenager? And what if it doesn't happen? Mm -hmm. How do you find meaning? How do you find what's important in your life? And how do you, at your core, get your Bill and Tedness back? And that's what Face the Music's about. Be sure to stay tuned for more coverage on Bill and Ted, including more from Ed Solomon, and what we think of the film before it's released on demand and in select theaters on August 28th.